So one of the things that's really been apparent at this trialogue is that people are looking for solutions. They want really tangible actions uh, that they can take that are going to help them manage across what we call the nexus elements, and that's biodiversity, water, food, health, and climate change. Um, and there's a real hunger for um, solutions that are practical, they're easy to implement, we don't have to wait for any sort of new technical uh, uh, innovations. And one of the things we really tried to do in the Nexus assessment is to present a range of those actions that we called response options um, that people could take at different scales. Um, some are quite low cost. Um, they don't rely on um, you know, high tech solutions. And what we're hearing at the Trilog is that some of those response options that we suggested as having um, high benefits across the Nexus elements are really things that people see benefits um, on the ground. Yeah, one of the, I think, important things that we realized when we were doing the Nexus assessment is that there's no one-fits-all solution. So you need to present a range of possible options and present their, their benefits in most cases. Some may have trade-offs and really let people on the ground look at what works for their particular context. And so we're hearing that at the trialogue. We're hearing from different countries that certain response options are more relevant to them than others. So in some of the country groups, they've been able to focus in on things that are of most interest to them. Um, so I heard, for example, Botswana was really interested in one of the response options around managing inland fisheries um, to be sustainable. That's something that resonated with them. Um, other countries uh, were focused on things like um, spatial planning, making sure that uh, the various uh, ministries and different organizations that are involved in decision making around management are doing so in an integrated way and they're using um, spatial uh, information to try to do that in a coherent fashion. Um, other uh, stakeholders, some that are representing communities or representing NGOs, uh, we're speaking about things like agroforestry, um, improving soil health, really tangible on the ground actions that they can support at a local level. Um, we also heard a lot about how important um, bringing in indigenous peoples and local communities and indigenous and local knowledge is um, to all of these plans. And we had quite a few response options in the Nexus assessment that focused in on either indigenous food systems or rights-based approaches to conservation that recognize the important role of IPLCs. And so we heard from um, various stakeholders, uh, including folks that were representing indigenous peoples, that these are really important to them. And it was good to have seen them in the Nexus assessment as something that's um, very viable, that there's good scientific evidence behind. Uh, and so it's been great to hear that all of those different you know, range of response options uh, have been helpful for different groups. So the Nexus Roadmap is really a process-oriented part of the assessment where we were looking at um, what does the scientific evidence tell us about successful um, innovations where you bring different groups together who maybe have conflicting values and you have to sort out you know, what is a, a shared vision that we want to take forward. And so we uh, put together this idea of a roadmap um, that's going to have various steps and some of those steps involve assessing information, making sure that you have the right technical information, uh, maybe it's uh, climate change mapping, um, maybe it's water resources mapping, uh, and then you work together in stakeholder groups and and you try to find equitable solutions, ones that um, reflect values that may be different among different groups. Um, and once you come up with some solutions that fit this diverse uh, group of stakeholders, um, the last steps of the roadmap are really about scaling those up um, to different places and then making sure that we have ongoing monitoring and education so that people are aware of where we might need to change, um, try to be adaptive with some of these solutions. Uh, and so this roadmap is really a process-oriented document to help people really think through the steps that they might need to take to put some of these actions um, into place. And so one of the things that we've heard at the Trialogue is the really important role of stakeholder engagement. And so that's, that's fundamental to the roadmap. It's getting people who might have been working on problems in a siloed manner, getting them together, and that enables the sort of holistic and coordinated action that we talk about in the Nexus assessment as being so essential to try to you know, derive solutions that cut across biodiversity, water, food, 
food, health, and climate change. Um, and if you don't have that stakeholder engagement, um, you're really not likely to reach those goals. So it was really heartening to, to hear people talk about um, the ways that they might uh, potentially use the Nexus Assessment and the roadmap um, for their work going forward.